Ooh. Let's actually do this. If we're gonna do it, we gotta do it properly. Oh my goodness. The number, oh. Feels like I'm right there, back on the, back on the home stretch. Coming in, coming into the finish line and, oh, goosebumps. What a day. I've taken a few weeks away from the channel, taken a few weeks away from making the videos. And boy, have I had time to reflect on all of the marathon training that I've put in ready for last Sunday, which I'm so pleased to say I finished the 2022 Brighton Marathon. I almost didn't. So stay tuned to the end of the video to hear what happened there. But um, yeah, my time away from making these videos, my time away from having the GoPro in my hand, I really reflected on how much of a valuable experience it was to log my thoughts throughout my training block for the Brighton Marathon, to log my process as a vegan athlete, to log my sobriety. Um, it's been a whole lot of fun and I really want to continue with that. I realised that I'm not a pro athlete, although I'd like to be one day. I'm literally eating salad on toast tonight. I did a marathon at the weekend, but you know, all I'm saying is I'm an everyday runner and I do really love this. I'm not doing any of this for money. It's just for the love of running and sharing what I find entertaining and funny a lot of the time, to be honest. I really do have a great time making these videos. So without further ado, let's jump into what exactly happened in the 2022 Brighton Marathon. Um, from a, a newly obsessed runner's perspective, if you're new to these videos, welcome. I started my running journey just under a year ago. In that time, um, I've given up cigarettes and also taken up a vegan diet, um, as well as completely abstaining from alcohol. And I've got really into running. So if you like what you sound in that short synopsis of what I do on this channel, please give me a thumbs up down below and please consider subscribing. So, Brighton Marathon 2022, where shall we begin? And my lights just died, so clunky start, but we'll move. Anyway, my weekend in Brighton started on a Saturday. My girlfriend Courtney and I went down Saturday morning and we had a hotel book for Saturday night and we had a really chilled day. Probably walked about 15,000 steps too far on Saturday. Uh, we both really love Brighton, so it was quite difficult to not eat all of the vegan food we saw and go into every vintage shop we walked past. So we had a beautiful day on the Saturday and actually managed to get quite a lot of sleep Saturday night, which is quite a surprise. Um, I've heard a lot of experienced marathoners talk about the difficult night of sleep they get for the marathon. So I was quite surprised to wake up at 6 6.30 after having somewhat of a full night of sleep. I'm really happy with the sleep I got. So we headed down to the start line and I had been drinking electrolytes and carb loading and really just trying to prepare my stomach for the race. What I hadn't done is tested all of this before. I tested my gels in the race and I tested um, the pace and I, I felt like I trained really well but I hadn't trained um, my stomach to take on so many carbs so I felt a bit heavy walking over to the start line which was a bit of a worry because you know what are you going to do with all that when you're about to run 42 kilometers so that was a, a strange mental process of do I need to go to the toilet before we begin am I going to brave this I did brave it in the end and I set off and I set off quite far back actually because I'm not sure what happened. I, it was probably because I got lost. I, I will admit I did get lost, but I was quite far back in the start. So I was actually starting with sort of like the three hour 30 pacer when I was trying to run three hours. So sort of like half an hour behind where I needed to be. Um, again, experience really paid dividends here because I have about minus five experience points going into this race. So I started off and my first two kilometers, because I was running with three hour 30 runners and not three hour runners, um, as you can imagine, was quite slow, which I actually really enjoyed because it just gave Courtney and her friends who formed a cheer crowd for me plenty of time to shout at me and, uh, and get some lovely phone footage. So that was the bonus of starting off in the slow pack, but Perhaps the disadvantage, or the least advantageous point of starting in the slow pack, was that I had a lot of overtaking to do. But 
I will say I absolutely loved soaring through Brighton Town Centre. So I came up to the first 5k slightly behind pace and at this point my adrenaline and my emotion had just got the better of me and the times that I've written on my hand really just didn't make any sense anymore. They'd smudged but also in my head I just thought I'm going for a time, this is crazy, I'm going to soak up the experience and um, I'm so pleased that that's where my mind went and it didn't become like really caught on these times you know these arbitrary numbers that I was somehow chasing that would be my measure of success I'm really pleased that early on I just lost that and enjoyed it so as we moved out of the sort of like Brighton town centre we moved into um, what I can describe as hill land anyone that's run the marathon will know but they just seem to find any hill on the map and say yes we'll go there next and uh, are you good sir? You'd, you'd, you'd look like you'd like a good hill. So another hill. Here, enjoy. Bon voyage. So um, hills for a lot. Um, and then we sort of found ourselves in this point where there was no aid stations. There was no support. Um, there wasn't even any sea. It, it just wasn't in Brighton anymore. We were sort of just running through country fields. That was quite strange and I, I wasn't expecting that. So as we moved out of this Greenland and then back into Brighton, um, we reached the halfway point in what felt like as long as this video has been so so far. It was just, it was in a flash and I couldn't believe it. And during the time I'd taken on water, I'd taken on my gels, everything was going perfectly. While I'm trying to get my legs to move a bit quicker, um, taking on gels, I'm feeling great, I'm feeling fantastic. And we once again passed through Brighton Town Centre and me with my name on my NSPC C vest. I'm just getting so many shouts. Come on, Scott, come on. It was, it was it was amazing. I've never experienced this in my life. And I also passed Courtney and my cheer squad, Courtney's friends. Thank you all for being there. My sister was also there. So it was a fantastic event. Um, and I had so much energy and this was probably one point in the marathon where I just lost the wheels and just ran way too quickly. Um, I think I put in sort of like a 3.45 kilometer, which if you're not a runner, was just stupid. Um, if you are a runner, it's also stupid, but just to explain that that was just a stupidly quick kilometer to put in. Um, so I basically had 20 kilometers to go and um, everything had been going well until we got into this strange bit of the Brighton Marathon where it's just really ordinary and you're sort of running down suburban streets and there wasn't anything particularly wrong with this um, apart from lots of children giving out like slices of orange and cups of sweets and the sweets I, I knew I had to refrain from uh, most sweets um, use gelatin which isn't vegan um, and I just didn't really want to mess around with that and orange slices um i really liked the idea of it but early on in the race i actually race who am i kidding <clears throat> early on in the survival challenge i was actually really struggling to take the water from the marshal's hands um it sort of seemed that when i put my hand out to grab one of the paper cups my first reaction instead of bringing it towards me was to sort of throw it on their face so i i did probably annoy quite a few marshals in the early few miles but I got the, the grabbing the cups down but I thought it's not worth trying to grab these oranges in the neighborhood from these people um because I'm probably not going to have the same amount of failing attempts um before I get the success you know it's, it's more than likely that there will be a couple of these orange vendors and I don't want to completely destroy both of their days by either throwing oranges at them or throwing oranges at the ground um, or at children, so I didn't take any oranges or sweets and I felt really left out I, I did feel like I was missing something and actually looking back This is probably when the salts started to leave my body quite rapidly because it was so hot um, I don't know if it was just me. I don't know if my charity vest is the best material But it was heavy and it was sweaty and I was so hot um, I'm quite a hot person anyway um, If there is a reason to sweat, I'll be sweating and it's um, not good when you're running because it does weigh you down and it's not comfortable. But anyway, 25k, I was struggling. And if you use Strava, you can look at the run. Um, 
on my Strava and you can see my wheels fell off, um, for lack of a better term, because yeah, things like to slow down, things like to hurt. And this is also the time in the race where people <laughs> running with me started to either slow down, lay down, or involuntarily lay down. Um, there was just a lot of people dropping like flies and that really scared me. Um, and really discouraged my spirits, I think. I really found it difficult to um, not want to do the same. But I stuck with it and I'm incredibly proud for doing so because um, had I known it was about to get harder, uh, I would have probably stopped. But in my marathon naivete, I, um, I carried on. And I did this all with a smile on my face. And it was at about 27k when I started to cry my eyes out. And, and I'm not sure what happened here. I'm not sure if I was in this delirious state of thinking about sad things or life experiences. Um, or if I was just overwhelmed by the sheer amount of support that I got with my charity vest, my name being on it. I don't know what happened, but I was sobbing. And it was great, you know, it was very romantic, I guess, in, in the sense of, you know, doing something you love and, and having this just devotion to it and your heart's warm and you're, uh, you, you, you can't keep the emotions in. There was that side of it, but there was also this side, you know, the ugly cry. Um, not that any cry should be discriminated against, but my cry is sort of like, <laughs> like hyperventilating, which isn't what you want to be doing when you're running. Um, especially not a marathon or 25 kilometers into a marathon. So I let the emotions get past and I, um, once again, took my attention back to my stride and, um, in, in short, I'd say the next 10 kilometers up till the 37 of the 42 were emotional. I kept having these fits of, um, tears very public fits of tears, I should say. People were there, come on, Scott, come on. And I would look at them and just be sobbing. And, you know, what sort of reaction do you think I got in that situation? It was just sorrow on their faces. I needed encouragement, but instead I was just matched by my face, um, which didn't help me. Um, so my mood in those last 10K sort of fluctuated between sorrow and then just like sheer willpower focus I'm gonna do this um without losing a limb which I felt like any moment a limb was gonna fall off or just absolutely just killing over because of all the sweat that left my body so it was a lot it was like it was a bit of a blur to be honest but you know as I say the first half of the marathon was fantastic the first 21 kilometers but now I'm 14 kilometers past the halfway point into this story and you can th see things have gone terribly so um make of that what you will but this was strange this was a surprise to me and it wasn't a tale of two halves i have to say it was almost a tale of the first half followed by five more terrible halves or slightly progressively worse halves so 35 kilometers things were bad 36 things were probably getting worse um, and then at 37 kilometers, I just had this thought that's like, there's a park run left, you know, five kilometers and I can run 5k and I'm quite confident in that. <clears throat> and I glance on my watch and I see if I run this 5k at the exact pace I'm doing right now, I'm going to come in with an average pace of 415 per kilometer. Now I don't expect any of you to have done the math on that, but 42.2 times four minutes 30 per kilometer equals about three hours for a marathon. So I'm gonna do it, I'm on track. So I get my head down and I sob, basically. I absolutely sobs and each contraction of my legs, my hamstrings, my quads, my knees, everything was just like, <coughs> it, it was awful, I could, I could hear um, I don't know what it was. I was probably imagining it. it. In fact, absolutely, I was imagining it. But um, in the moment, it was making that sound. And it was awful. By it, I mean everything. So 5K, 4K, 3K, 2K. It was just cruel that there was a kilometre left to go at this point, a thousand metres. <clears throat> it was so annoying. It was just... 
you know, you know, on the sat nav, your destination is on the left in a thousand meters, and you're like, oh, it's just there. You know, it's literally in front of you. This thousand meters was like a year away. So I'm nearing it, and I'm nearing it, and I just absolutely couldn't wait. I was sobbing. People were still passed out the sides of the road, and it was just really getting to me. And I ran past the NSPCC team, and they're cheering me on, and it was just. Oh, what an experience. It was completely emotion-led, this last 400k. We were down to 300k, 200, 100. I see Courtney, my sister, her friends, I see the cheer squad, and it, everything's, wow, it was, it was beautiful, this moment. And I come into the finish line, and just the feeling of just bliss and terror and pain all at once just take over that movement that... Was, was had just happened for the last three hours and I was crying once again and I got my medal right around my neck and I just had this moment of just I can't believe it's over I, I can't believe it I, I feel like I'm gonna get thrown back into 26k and have to do it all again because it felt like so many times I had to remind myself to keep running that I, I want to do this that there's no one forcing me but this is something I want to do um I couldn't believe that it was done when it was. And I looked down at my watch, and I'd done it in three hours. But the course, because of my early zigzagging, had ended up being about 300 metres long. Um, longer than marathon distance. And I'd actually added 45 seconds to my time. So I'd run three hours and 45 seconds. Um... Now, this doesn't mean anything. I'm so incredibly pleased with finishing it in the first place. Whether I'd run 3.30, 4 hours, 4.30, it doesn't matter. The fact that I finished it, put the effort in, and loved every second, and had that whole experience, I wouldn't change a thing. Okay, fair enough. If you get three hours or under, you qualify for the Boston Marathon, which would have been great. I'm 45 seconds off Boston. Whatever. The strange part of this experience came as soon as I crossed that line. Um, the video on screen now shows me coming in and my stride's not perfect but I look pretty good and pretty comfortable and pretty happy coming into the finish. Now the second that video clip ended I slowed down to a walk since I was over the line it would have been ridiculous to run anymore but that walk um, hasn't improved since it's been three days now and I still can't walk so um, the main lessons I can take away from my first marathon experience was that I think I was more mentally ready than physically ready, which I don't particularly is a bad thing. Um, I've got 16 weeks of training or so until my next marathon in Adelaide in August. I've got plenty of time to recover and get my spirits up for that race. That, that, that race, Jesus, who, who do I think I am? That survival challenge. But the, yeah, so... The, the second realisation from the Brighton Marathon is that the marathon distance is a beast. It's not two half marathons. It's not eight and a bit park runs. I don't really know what it is, but I, I, obviously it's objective what it is to everyone. I don't think that Elliot Kipchoge's marathon is the same as mine. Yeah, it was, it was a ridiculous experience. So I think I'm going to leave it there for today. I am still processing the event that took place on Sunday. I'm incredibly proud of myself after less than a year of not smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol, I can't believe that my body allowed me to do that. And I can't believe that my mind motivated me through that. It was insane. But well done to everyone who was there on the day. Whether you finished, whether you got a PB, or even if you took part, those people out there supporting in that sunshine well done to you and thank you for being there because I think it was all of our collective efforts that made the day as special as it was um, and for any of you watching that supported my place on the day that was given to me by NSPCC for fundraising thank you so much for your donation I really do appreciate it but as always guys thank you so much for watching this video I would love to hear about your first marathon experiences down in the comments um, was anyone's experiences as surprising to them as mine were to me? I know that's quite a strange question to ask, but I'm really surprised by how difficult the whole thing was. Maybe I'm naive. Probably. As always, I like to sign off these videos by saying, find gratitude and find peace. 
I really do believe that there is peace to be found within um, if we do just find something to say thank you for within ourselves as much as we can in every moment every day see you in the next one guys thanks for watching it's actually like a proper bit of metal as well i don't know what tapping it is doing but it's it's proper